darling, there's a very important question I want to ask you. I want you to be my... <laughs> be my... Gondor. Gondor. Oh, that's not bravery. <laughs> yes, it's the Benny Hill Show, and here is Benny Hill. Faith by E. M. Barrister. The wisest man I ever knew had a cottage outside Lou. <laughs> His name was David Alexander Kidd. It was David who predicted the world would end in 1960. And for David Alexander Kidd, it did. <laughs> he was round his grocer's, Mr. Spicer, playing with his bacon slicer. <laughs> a lovely girl. <laughs> with great big knuckles. <laughs> known as Sue. When the blade cut off his hand, he picked it up and ran to see the famous surgeon, Dr. Pugh. He said, can you sew it back again? He said, of course I can, my friend. But first of all, you'll have to pay 2,000 quid. He said, I can't afford to pay. He said, in that case, good day. Push off home. <laughs> That's what David did. As he passed the water mill, he glanced up at the hill to where the chapel of St. Levy used to stand. <laughs> and a little farther down, he saw a little farther down. <laughs> who was sitting with his surplus in his hand. <laughs> he was stitching up a tear and sewing with such care, David said, Father, could you sew my hand back on? He said, there is nothing in God's plan that is beyond the scope of man. But first of all, you must have faith, my son. So while Faith held his thumb, <laughs> David sat down while his chum stitched back his hand just like it was before. It's a miracle, Dave cried. The priest just smiled with humble pride. Humble pride? <laughs> As he saw him disappear across the moor. When Dave got back to his street, who should he chance to meet but the wicked profiteering Dr. Pugh? Dave said, look what faith has done for me. Ah, and done it all for free. So, Dr. Pugh, you know what you can do. <laughs> Nice to be with you once again, and now you will you welcome, please, from Madrid, the delectable Diana Darby. Ay, señor Benny, qué honor es para mí trabajando en este espectáculo y para usted. <laughs> sí, sí. Solo tengo una pena, y es que mis padres no pueden venir aquí. Sí, sí. <laughs> Quiero preguntar a usted una cosa. Sí. ¿Usted cree que yo tengo bonita figura? Sí, sí, sí. Muchas gracias, porque si usted dice que no, voy a decir que es usted un loco. Sí, sí. Like a native. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with her personal drummer, L. Sidney, Diana Darby. Straight up in the air. Four if you catch her right. <laughs> Last night she's out sowing the wild oats. This morning she's praying for a crop failure. <laughs> The only two who can live as cheap as one is a horse and a sparrow. <laughs> Think about it. Until I am old and gray, the same will be my philosophy. My philosophy is live every day as if it was your last, because one day you'll be right. <laughs> The wife thinks I'm after something. If I come home late, she thinks I've had it. <laughs> and she's right! Then you know that everything is going to be just like it used to 
My wife has got a figure like a Venus. Pencil. <laughs> she has all the charm of a temporary filling. I'll kick her in the mouth, but why should I improve her looks? I'll just get something else. I've heard of girls who walk home from rides. She rides home from walks. Last night she came, came home, been out driving with the producer, came a one muddy shoe. I said, how come you got one muddy shoe? She said, I changed my mind. It's a very simple story that I tell, and it's half as old as time. Once upon a time, there were two Chinamen. Now look how many. <laughs> Go out and see if it's raining. She says, call the dog in and see if it's wet. <laughs> Not even in my wildest dreams could I imagine that we'll ever part. You know who's got no imagination? The parents of Ephraim Zimbalus Jr. Someday soon will be as one and all my lovely daydreams will come true. Woke up this morning, had a cup of coffee with two lumps, the wife and her mother. <laughs> something. If you have a row with your wife at breakfast time, settle it by using psychology. Smack her in her mouth with half a grapefruit. <laughs> Not only will it settle the argument, but you'll be given her vitamin C as well. <laughs> oh, God, this kid comes from Spain. She came across with 50 sailors before she left. <laughs> Surprised. <laughs> Two of the world's top agents, but unfortunately, they work for the other side. But the BBC? A certain Eastern power. <laughs> Who shall be nameless? Ah, Russia. <laughs> uh, they have in their possession the entire plan of the next NATO exercise. A microfilm no bigger than a postage stamp. But how do you read it? You lick it and stick it on your eyeball. <laughs> Get it back before it falls into the hands of... You know who. Russia. <laughs> he keeps it in a snuffbox. A snuffbox? A small, anti-magnetic, bulletproof silver snuffbox. Now, he knows what you look like. But, being a master of disguise, I'm sure that won't worry you, Mervyn. <laughs> Skipper, sounds to me like a job for old Ben Achman. Good night, sir. Good night, Mervyn. <laughs> I'm giving you an assistant. I don't need an assistant. I don't need an assistant. I need an assistant. I need an assistant. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Did you make out, maybe? I was too smart for that pair, Skipper. <laughs> you hand it over! You don't think I'd carry it about on my person, do you? Search him thoroughly. Search him? <laughs> Why waste time? I'm sure he hasn't got it on him. Well, <laughs> you can't be sure, can you? I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, you don't know that till you have a little ferret about something. I mean, you don't... Oh, I, I might have it. I might, very I, well. I might have it on me, might not. I mean, I might. Nothing there. Thank you very much. <laughs> A little one. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. I think they're trying to say something. Get your hands. What have they done to you? Hey. What have they done to you? I get a light. Hey. Just a minute. This is not nice of you, that kid. It's this bloody snuff box. Hey, come back. Hey. Stop him. Down, down. Come here. <laughs> On toast. Three beans on toast over here. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, with
with their latest release, Second Love, will you welcome Design? <laughs> Welcome to London, Mr. Spieler. It is an honor and a pleasure. It's an honor and a pleasure for us. That's what I meant. <laughs> Nearly all your films star men rather than women. Are you against actresses? Not as often as I'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> but personally, I think it all stems back to the days when I made my first cowboy film and I had the actress Victoria V <laughs> foisted on me. She was named after your Queen Victoria. And not so damn long after either. Uh, <laughs> and, but oh God, she was big. I mean, everybody's entitled to be big, but she abused the privilege. She was big! <laughs> 36 inches! Each one! <laughs> oh, God, she couldn't sing, she couldn't dance, she couldn't act. What could she do? With difficulty, stand up. <laughs> I remember at one point, the uh, hero, you know, he had an arrow shot into his leg because the Indians were chasing him. They hated him, you know. They hated him from three pictures back. <laughs> That'll show you how much. And she was cradling his head between here, anyway. <laughs> Oh God, he thought he'd gone deaf. <laughs> Looked like a pawnbroker's sign. <laughs> anyway, what happened was, she looked at the arrow and she said, I'm gonna pull it out. 
and it might hurt. You'd better bite on something. Well, she pulled and he bit. And I got a rocket because I found out she was the producer's niece. Oh, I see she got a job through relatives. So did your queen. <laughs> anyway, we got her a uh, Stetson and a uh, Spurs and a hop along chastity belt. She looked like a uh, cowgirl. We got a few little, but you what? She looked like a cowgirl. She looked more like a girl cow. <laughs> But fortunately, on the uh, film, we had a hero who was an ex-Marine. God, he was gorgeous. And uh, <laughs> in a very old sort of way, you understand. And he was very butch. And I remember he was built like a brick shipyard. He really was. Uh, he won the Golden Gloves, you know, the tournament. They were gorgeous. They came up to here. <laughs> and he was so witty. And I should never forget the first time I met him in the Hollywood office there. I said, where's the water cooler? He said, in Alaska. <laughs> right here, doesn't it? He was a gorgeous boy, he really was. You made several films with W.C. Fields. I made his first color film. That was Lulu Bell <laughs> with Mae West. <laughs> well, we have a clip. Oh, wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Bartender, uh, give me two fingers of red eye, will you? Uh, thank you. Medicinal purposes only, I understand. <laughs> but the two fingers don't go anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely, thank you, Tony. <laughs> yeah. And a glass of water, Mr. Little John? Uh, thank you, Johnny. You remembered. <laughs> Say, uh, how's the wine? Uh, better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, young man, I have just been involved in a fracas. Veritable montage of fisticuffs. Who was you fighting, Mr. Little John? Uh, you heard of Mark McGoolies, the Milwaukee Mauler? Why, well, sure. His mother. <laughs> knocked her down. No, I knocked her down. Uh, oh, yes, I did. I did, you know, but I kicked her hard. Uh, that must have hurt. No, it didn't. I had my boots on. <laughs> Merely stopped my great toe. Well, hello there, handsome. Yeah, why, jumping to house of fat as I live and breathe heavily. Never seen a thing like that since I was weaned. I've a little John, ma'am. Well, we all have our problems. <laughs> Don't think I've had the pleasure. And you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. <laughs> Her name's Angelica. Angelica! Oh, what are you from a suppilation? My friends call me Angel for short, but not for long. And it's true what they say about you, ma'am. You're a scarlet woman. You're cheap. You're common. You're promiscuous. You're permissive. Yeah, I like that in a girl. <laughs> Allow me, ma'am, to press my eager lips against your dainty digits. What are you trying to do? Dig my diamonds out with your nose? I haven't had a hell like that since last night. Yeah, four aces and a king. <laughs> Playing poker. <laughs> Put that hand back in the goldfish bowl, will you dear? Watch it, Sonny. Yeah, Sonny? Why, ma'am, I'll have you know I'm not a fuddy duddy. I'm not a moon calf. Have you know my father was a mayor. What was your mother? A jockey? <laughs> well, I'll have you know my father fought the last of the Mohicoans. My father made the Brooklyn Bridge. My father made the Empire State Building. What did your father ever make? Look me over, big boy. Look me over. Yeah. Now, I'm going up to my room for a little scotch and so far. You follow me? So long, boys. Get a load of that walk. Yeah, it reminds me, I must get my watch fixed. Yeah. So long, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you have a reputation for being unconventional and for doing your own thing. Oh, well, I believe you should do your own thing. I've always felt that, you know. 
Because, I mean, sometimes if Bruce and I want to have a martini, you know, we just have one. We, we don't even fly the seaplanes down to the little <laughs> island or anything. You know? <laughs> oh, sometimes when I'm feeling reckless, I have after eight minutes at seven o'clock. Oh. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> And in, your sequ and in your sequel to the Carol Baker film, Baby Doll, you've reversed the roles and the woman child becomes a man child. Yes. And you've called it Baby Boy. Baby Boy. Oh, and the lead in this, this boy is gorgeous. This boy, you watch, oh, he's gorgeous. Well, we have the closing scene from Baby Boy. And good night and thank you, Mr. Spieler. Great honor. <laughs> that voice anywhere. <laughs> Uncle Rastus. It's not so, Uncle Rastus. It's your intended Lucy Comfort. Let me in. I can't let you into my booty wall on account of I'm wearing my pajamas. <laughs> well, I'm saying, baby boy, why can't you open the door in your pajamas? Because I don't have a door in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of bed now, and I'm going to leave my security blanket here. <laughs> and I'm gonna trip over to the door and I'm gonna let you in and when I say come in I'm gonna unlock it when I say come in you can come in and not before so there <laughs> right. you can come on in now <laughs> Sitting on my balloon. Get off my balloon there. What do you think you're playing at? Could I just have one little kiss? No, you can't have a kiss. You know I'd be sitting on my bed anyway, because I don't believe in that sort of thing. We're well, not before marriage anyway. And ain't none too sure about afterwards either. <laughs> but baby boy, I can't wait forever. I'm a getting old. You sure are. Still ain't none of us getting any younger. I should be 20 myself tomorrow. <laughs> ain't none of us getting any older either. Ain't you got me nothing by birthday? Yeah. I bought you some nice presents. Some nice <laughs> presents. Well, lickety spit and chippity chop. What you get me, Lucy? What you get me? Well, now, I got you a new teddy bear. <sighs> <laughs> a new tired bear. <laughs> <laughs> what else you get me, Lucy? What else you get me? And a woolly panda. <gasps> <laughs> a woolly panda. <laughs> <laughs> what else get me, Lucy Cumber? What else get me? And a brand new tractor Grimler. What <laughs> 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 heaven's name is a tractor Grimler? I don't know, honey, but they was ten cents across, so I bought you one. You mean to tell me you never got me no muff in the mule? Muff in the mule? You already got Crump at the camel. I trod on him as I come in. <gasps> now, you leave Crumpet alone! <laughs> Otherwise, your eyes will go weak. <laughs> now, I told you about that before. Otherwise, I'm going to say I am dependent on you. I'm sick of all this. If I had any sense, I'd be marrying Elmer Catrap. He's old and ugly. He ain't so. He got nice wavy hair. Well, I got nice wavy hair. Well, he got strong white teeth. Well, I got strong white teeth. Well, he got brains and intelligence. Well, I got strong white teeth. <laughs> Well, if my daddy was here, he'd horsewhip. You haven't he had a horse. Your daddy. Your daddy. That's all you talk about is your daddy. I don't reckon you never had a mammy. I did so, too, have a mammy. Just don't like to think of her, that's all. Just don't like to remember that night when she was stood on the railroad track and the rain a-coming down and the wind and the howling. I said, Mammy, move, Mammy, move. And the train was getting nearer and nearer. The trains were running then. <laughs> I said, 
Mammy. Mammy. I said, move, Mammy, and the train's getting nearer and nearer. And the winds are howling. She's just staring out into space like she was deranged. And I said, I could hear this train getting nearer. And I said, Mammy, move. Mammy, please, it's your little baby crying. The train's getting nearer. And I said, Mammy, move, move, move. What happened? She moved. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you before, that's Iander Pyander's chair. Baby boy? Don't do that. Oh, sorry. When we marry, you're gonna grow up so fast. Grow up? What do you mean, grow up? <laughs> Don't you even know what grown up is? Well, a grown up is, I me taking your hand like this. I put my arm around mm. you like this. Mm. And I kissing you like this. <laughs> you might well laugh. <laughs> you better go out there. <laughs> who we? Who ever so we? <laughs> now you see here, Andy Pandy, old boy, old pal. <laughs> You ain't gonna sit in that chair no more! Why not, baby boy? Tell me, why not? Cause it's Golly's chair. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dobbs, come in now, please. Come on, I'll tell you. <laughs> you got here all right, then. You come to court my daughter or buy my spotted hog? Will you sell your spotted hog? Nope. And I come to court your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen hundred and forty-three in an area most uncool. There lived a boy called Harold, a shy and sensitive youth, a very shy and sensitive youth. Oh, I know a gal and her name is Hillary. Took her for a walk down by the distillery. Put her in the club and they put me in the pillory. Poor old Harry Slackbeck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cut that over there. That's a lovely bit of muffin, eh? Oh, all that meat and no potatoes, eh? <laughs> oh, Gordy, I say, can Meg come out to play? <laughs> no, that's three farthings. Three farthings? Well, we've only had 12 pints. Blimey, I thought your Squire Reef was going to start pegging prices. You leave Squire Reef alone. He's promised to take me for a sail in his boat tonight. You want to watch him, girl? You get halfway across Broadstairs Bay and he run out of wind. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something he'll never do. You're just <laughs> jealous. Because <laughs> you don't know no nobles. Don't know no nobles. <laughs> my sister got Earl coming round this evening. I bet he's not a bill to do. He will be if my old man catches him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, Harry. Yeah? Is he entitled to bear arms? Oh, yeah, bear arms, <laughs> bear legs, bear anything he likes. <laughs> I'll stand here all day long. I shall repair to my chamber. Why, has the handle come off, has it? <laughs> 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 What's up with him? Yeah, you don't take your notes of him. He's got no sense of humour. They hanged his father this morning. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You coming up a justing tournament tonight? No, all them justing tournaments are all fixed tonight. Now, look here, Lord Walton. I don't care what Lord Walton of Kent says. <laughs> I'm telling you, them <laughs> tournaments are all fixed. Look, the other night I went up Kenilworth, I seen the Kenilworth Crusher versus the Black Knight, didn't I? Yeah. Now, there's two falls each. Yeah. Then the Knight sticks his pipe up Crusher's queer ass, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> then the Crusher kicks him in the codpiece yeah. and wins by a submission in the fifth. I tell you, I seen the same jousting tournament three weeks ago down Windsor. They're all fixed, mate. Well... Yeah, cop them two over there, eh? Oh, lovely grub. Yeah. Right. What? I don't think much of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there you go. You see, you're jumping to conclusions again, aren't you? 
That's the only exercise you ever get. <laughs> Look, you're assuming... You're assuming that the attractive one of them two will go for the attractive one of us two. No, I think she'll go for you, mate. <laughs> I've got a human being for the same price. Good night. All right, darling. Hello, love. How you going on? All right, eh? Hey? Yeah, how'd you like to be May Queen this year? I can fix it for you. I know Lord Morley and the judges. You must be out of your medieval mind. I'd like to be May Queen! <laughs> it must be a face. It's got ears on it. <laughs> I was Miss Bunstopper last year. That don't surprise me. <laughs> You don't do their stomachs any good, either. <laughs> I've got the figure of a 19-year-old girl! Well, give it back! You'll get me all wrinkled! <laughs> oh, but here, listen, I'll tell you what, darling, your fancy little dance, let's go up to Village Green and have a jig round the Maypole. Or the Omen Colonial, if you prefer. I don't yeah, mind. he was serenaded. He can sing. <laughs> he can sing and play the lute. Go on, Harry, give him a song. <laughs> they don't hear me sing. We do! <laughs> oh, you don't hear me sing. Come on! No, you don't hear me sing. Oh, all right, then, if you don't want If you to... really want to hear me sing, then that's <laughs> you are. Right, you are, then. Here we go. Squire Pitt locked his wife in a chastity belt, then climbed upon his horse. But he left the key with the footman, lest he was killed in the wars. Up at the window he saw the footman a waving frantically. He said, Squire Pitt, this key doesn't fit, and he said, you're telling me. Oh, monkeys, flunkies, half a dozen is two. Brown tits, blue tits, a little cock or two. Isn't that a dainty dish to set before the... Charming, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? Please sing me. Yeah, yeah, son. Yeah. I've been looking for a boy like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You've got a musical bent. A musical bent what? <laughs> <laughs> You've got talent. Those hands will one day find gold. And by the look of your nails, you've started digging already. already. <laughs> Just stick by me and I'll make you top troubadour of the country. All you need is a group of glee singers with pudding face and haircuts, a sack butt, a viola pisicoto, and not to mention a quadrille. <laughs> a quadrille? I said not to mention a quadrille. I'm sorry. <laughs> and pretty soon you'll be rich. Half a man, what do you get out of it? 50% of the loot. Oh, you're not cutting my loot in half. <laughs> Oi, vey. On his bending back, down left the way he followed cheerfully. Found that fame and fortune did not come easily. Off you go. Right out, Sir Lou. <laughs> she is so fine, she is so fair, I'd follow my lady anywhere. <laughs> my life. It shouldn't happen to two dogs. <laughs> One dog couldn't handle it. <laughs> like I showed you. Oh, I saw that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Harris Sickman. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a leg. I keep going like that. Uh huh. I don't know my phone. I go like this. She is a fine, she is a fine, she is a fine. I fuck a lot, my lady, all the way to Memphis. I'm an anywhere. Oh, yeah, That's good. Now, look, don't forget that sullen, underprivileged look. And the yodel. Here! And the kick in the air. Strut. <laughs> now, not too manly, though. Sorry. <laughs> and whatever you do, don't comb your hair. And pretty soon you'll be ready for the big time. <sighs> so Harold and his mental group, they travelled far and wide. They sang in bars and coffee shops <laughs> around the countryside. And then at last that moment, they knew what they would come. When they took the bill that Sunday night at the London Parade. Oh, <laughs> 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 she is a fine. She's a fine. Oh, she is a fine. Oh, 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very much for being with us. We look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Until then, bye-bye, but we're going to leave you with something especially for the ladies. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Bert. That's number 18, Bert Flange. And last, but by no means least, ladies and gentlemen, is number 19, Ivor Biggin from Mill Hill. <laughs> Ivor comes in a shapely 43, 43, 43. His ambition is to be a straight actor. <laughs> His favourite spectator sport is football. <laughs> In his spare time, he likes to meet unusual people. <laughs> His favourite holiday resort is Greece. <laughs> and his favourite day wear is the casual look. <laughs> that then is Ivor. So you're Ivor Biggin from Mill Hill. No, I'm Ivor Mill from Biggin Hill. Oh. Well, I'm sure what all the girls would like to know is, are you married? Yes, I am married and I have 15 children. And what's your hobby? Flying my kite. <laughs> what do you think about all this men's lib? Well, I wouldn't like, go as far as like burning my jockstrap or anything like that, you know. <laughs> but I do like think we ought to be more equal. Me, myself, personally, that's what I think myself. Yes. You know? Well, now, if you won the £1,000, what would you do with it? Well, I should like to help people who are worse off than what I am. I mean, I should like to help unmarried fathers. And I'd like to start a, an institute for destitute property speculators. <laughs> well, that's really splendid. Thank Isn't you very it? much indeed. Thank you. I have a big that one. That's number... Yes, that's all. Thank you. That's number 19, Ivor Biggin from Mill Hill. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, as always on this occasion, the people with the most difficult uh, decision to make are the judges. And I believe we have it here. Thank you very much indeed. And as is traditional, ladies and gentlemen, we shall announce the result in reverse order. Number three is number six, Fred Chuff <laughs> from Dalton <laughs> Abbott. <laughs> Number two, ladies and gentlemen, is number 23, Ted Drunge from Chipping Sodbury. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Mr. TV Times, 1974. <laughs> and the winner is number 19, Ivor Biggin from Mill Hill. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, last year's winner won a fabulous month's holiday in the Bahamas with Miss Greenwell. And he's here tonight to crown our new Mr. TV Times. Here he is, 19-year-old Claude Bottom. And now, Mr. TV Times, your press awaits. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, 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 hey. It's all moody. No, 